Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle, and today I want to talk to you about how homeschooling doesn't always have to be fun. So if you're new here, I have an eight and a five-year-old. Well, my eight-year-old is almost nine, and we've been homeschooling this past year. <laughs> we are first-year homeschoolers, so this has been our first year. And I wanted to make this video because recently I've been seeing a lot of YouTube videos, social media posts about how how to make math fun, how to make reading fun, how to make writing fun <laughs> in homeschool. And here's the thing, it doesn't always have to be fun. I feel like a lot of these posts or these little Instagram boxes are giving us unrealistic views of homeschooling. And don't get me wrong, I think there are many opportunities where it is fun and it's engaging and it's those picnic moments where everybody's discussing really deep questions. Those do happen, <laughs> but also boring things happen too, and that's completely fine. And I think our children actually benefit <laughs> from having some boring work to do occasionally. So for example, my oldest was recently doing a writing assignment, and the assignment was she had to write a letter from the perspective of one of the characters in the book she was reading, explaining some events that happened in the book. And she wrote it all really nicely, and uh, we were going through it, and I said, you know, I noticed that there's a transition missing here. You talk about one event and then another event, but you don't talk about how that character got from one to the other. And as if I had never read the book, I wouldn't know, so we need to include something in there talking about how the character got from one event to another. And she immediately gave me some pushback and attitude about it. And it, w it could have been very easy to say, okay, well, this assignment isn't working. I can, I can tweak it. I can make it a different writing assignment. Or I can switch up the book and make it a more interesting book to her. Because she wasn't the biggest fan of the book. She said it was fine, but it wasn't entertaining, so to say. <laughs> and I think that's a good point, that we often walk the line of fun and entertaining. I don't think we necessarily should be entertaining our children. So I talked to her a bit more about the assignment and what it really got down to it is after she said, oh, this is boring, I don't want to do it, it's boring. What it, the real issue was she didn't want to write more. And we again talked more about that, about what is it that's bothering you about this assignment? And when it came down to it, it was she just physically didn't want to write another sentence because her hand hurt. I was like, oh my God. So she's definitely working on her hand muscles as she's writing more. But that's the thing. We got down to it and realized it had nothing to do with the curriculum or the assignment or the book, but there was another thing going on. But I think when we stop and our knee-jerk reaction is to switch something up, to make it more fun. Obviously, they're not engaged. We need to engage them more. I think sometimes that can not be helpful. I think it's an invaluable lesson for our children to learn that sometimes work is work. Sometimes things aren't always fun. You know, I, I dislike doing my taxes. I find it incredibly boring, but you know what? It's something I have to do. I dislike doing the dishes and constantly cooking and feeding everyone, but that's something I have to do, teaching us that you have certain responsibilities. And to go more into that, especially with academic, and the nice thing about homeschooling is we can definitely cater to the needs of our child, all right? We can choose the curriculum based on their, their learning styles and all different things like that. But we need to be careful because it's very easy for our children to fall in the trap of it's easy, or things are presented to me in a way where it best fits me. And that's just not how the real, wor real world works sometimes. Think about if your child goes into higher education, they're gonna be given assignments from professors where they have certain parameters in which they have to do their work in. You're not gonna get to necessarily choose a different book than the assignment or <laughs> prepare it in a different way. That's not always an option. Even if you don't go into higher education, you just go into the course, you're going to be given assignments through your boss or whatever field you go into where you have to do things within certain parameters and it's not always fun sometimes it's work 
which I think if they are occasionally exposed to things that are sometimes boring, they will have more resilience when it comes to it. So another reason I really think it's okay to have some boring work is that it's a challenge for them, right? They have to force themselves to get through it. And these, uh, this is nothing new. Sometimes we have to force ourselves to do things that aren't the most fun. And I think if they work those muscles of self-resilience and knowing that they can get through it. So for example, at the beginning of the year, my oldest had some difficulties with math. It was challenging and she had some math anxiety from her previous years in the public school. But what that ended up, and it would have been very easy for me to blame it on the curriculum or, or, and switch it up and find something that was easier or more suited to what she needed, but I knew it wasn't the curriculum. And that's the great thing about homeschooling is that we know our children very well. So we know when it's the curriculum and when it's something else. Now, don't get me wrong, I definitely think there are instances when the curriculum just does not work and you gotta throw it out and try something new. For example, I've tried The Good and Beautiful multiple times and it's just, <laughs> it's never worked. It's never worked for our family, no matter you know, I tried their science and different programs like that. It just, it wasn't great for our family. So I think there's instances, yes, when it's the curriculum and you have to toss it. But I think a lot of it is we don't want to necessarily find that pushback or we want to find ways to make it fun or entertaining for them. And it doesn't always have to be. For example, my child was in the public school system for kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And one of the difficulties she had with that was she wasn't challenged. She went into these grades pretty much knowing the things she would need to <laughs> advance to the next grade already. So she was kind of forgotten about in the classroom because she was already proficient in the area she needed to be. So she was not being challenged or really work through something difficult for her until she came upon math in second grade where for the first time she was being challenged and something was frustrating and difficult. And she would often say, oh, this is boring. I don't want to do this. It's so boring. And I think she didn't necessarily mean boring as the sense we think it is, but this is frustrating. This is a challenge for me. I have to work through that because she had never worked through those frustrating feelings when it came to academic work before. And when we started homeschooling this year with math, there was a lot of pushback with that because she hadn't had the experience of working through something challenging or frustrating. And I feel like when we get the pushback from our kids or the frustration, sometimes it can be our reaction as the educator to think, okay, I need to switch it up or I need to make it more engaging. And it does, that's not always the answer. And the great thing is you being the parent, you know when it's the curriculum or when it's something else, but don't be afraid to encounter that frustration. It doesn't mean you're necessarily doing something wrong. It doesn't mean the curriculum's bad. It can be just a point where your child is working through something. I want my child to look at something, and she does now, especially with math. She'll look at a problem, and it can be frustrating and difficult at times, but she do that doesn't stop her now. She understands she will get through to the other side. She will figure it out. She has that resilience because of the previous work she's done. If I had switched it up and made it more fun, I don't think she would have necessarily learned that lesson. You can get through it and get to the other side because you'll encounter that many times in your adult life, not just in academic work, but understanding that, yeah, it's not the f most fun, but you'll get through it and it'll be over. Because let's face it, not every subject you're ever going to encounter is going to be amazing. <laughs> and I think that's another point that as educators, it puts a lot of pressure on us to really reinvent the wheel every single time we do something, whether it's science or math or language arts, where we gotta Pinterest or find other ways to incorporate things and resources and video links. And it's just, sometimes a worksheet's enough. Sometimes reading out of a book is enough. And I think with things like Instagram posting, it just, it's selling you on something that doesn't really exist. It's telling you that you need to do this or incorporate this part or or 
I have more games. It doesn't always need to have those elements. Yes, there are rooms sometimes where it fits and it works for your family, where you can incorporate different things like that. But don't feel bad if you're not doing all of those things, that if it's not the most fun, if your kid's complaining that it's boring, because sometimes life's boring. It's a good lesson to learn. So thanks for watching.